today we are going to do directing part 4 and in this we are going to study the concept of leadership and the various styles of leadership now what is leadership a leader is a person who has got followers if you don't have followers then what are you a leader for and a leader has to be somebody in the front if you want to move a string you cannot push it from the behind you'll have to pull it from the front so leader leadership is the activity of influencing people people should come under your influence only then they will follow you and in case of business a leader leadership is a process it goes on and on that means of making people voluntarily want to achieve the organizational goals there should not be any pressure on them they should not feel pressurized that means a leader should be somebody who should take everybody with him so that the organizational goals can be achieved now come to the features of leadership first is the ability to influence others so if a leader is not able to influence others the others don't listen to him then he is not a very good leader then second feature of leadership is that leadership should bring change in the behavior so the behavior of the people should change towards positive behavior from negative or not doing anything the behavior should be positive then leadership indicates in interpersonal relation so a manager as a leader he should be able to know about the workers he should know about everybody's name what's going on in their family the various problems that may be there he may be facing that the leader should know about it so he should have interpersonal relations then leader should help you achieve the common goals so what are the organizational goals the leader should help the subordinate achieve the organizational goals and then leadership is a continuous process leadership goes on and on it's not that you are a leader just once you once a leader always a leader so these are the features of leadership now come to the styles of leader basically there are three styles of leader autocratic democratic and laissez faire so let's start with the first one that is autocratic autocratic as the name suggests he takes all the decisions by himself he doesn't listen to anybody he is a very strict leader and he only gives orders and he expects his subordinates to respect his orders and obey his orders he does not listen to anybody so look at the autocratic leader the subordinates under him are pale in comparison to him so he is only saying everything and they just have to carry out the orders now what are the features of an autocratic leader first of all communication is one way he doesn't listen to anybody he only gives the orders second he does not like to be contradicted he does not take no for an answer so you cannot say no if he says you do this you have to do it then he believes in reward and punishment both so if you have done good job he'll reward you but if you have not done the work that has been given to you then be ready for punishment also and he's very it's very important to have this type of a leader where the work is time bound suppose you have to produce certain things within a given time period then this person he uses the stick dande ke zor pe kaam karwata hai to time bound work can be completed on time then it helps increase labor productivity naturally when he doesn't take no for an answer the labor is nothing else to do but to produce so the productivity increases and then quick decision making because he doesn't consult any bit nobody can say argue with him or say anything to him so the decision making is all by himself so that's very quick so these are the features of an autocratic leader then comes the democratic leader we live in a democracy so democratic leader is person who takes a decision after consulting everybody so look at this diagram see the communication is both ways so even the subordinate can communicate so before he comes to decision he'll consult the people who are going to do, undertake that work and then he comes to a decision this is called a democratic decision now what are the features of a democratic leader encourages employees to participate in decision making so he wants the employees also to participate then he believes that the people perform best when they have to set their own objectives let us say the workers have to be given training computers have been introduced now the workers have to be given training regarding computers now there are two ways of giving the training so what this leader does is he calls the trade union leaders and tells them either the workers can stay back half an hour after work and take the training or they can come on saturday and sunday because saturday and sunday is off for them they can come on saturday and sunday and take the training now he tells the trade leaders to decide so he allows them to set their own objective so whatever the trade in, uh, leaders say he consults them and that is done so the third feature of 
democratic leader is that he respects others opinion so if the trade union leader says okay workers will wait after uh, working hours and then they, they'll they take the training nobody wants to come on holiday so he does that he is respecting everybody's opinion and fourth he believes in exercising control by using forces within the organization this is a very important point he uses forces within the organization see he has talked to the trade union he's called the trade union and told them to decide so when you yourself decide as to what you want to do it's binding on you so he uses the forces within the organization to come to a decision and this is the most common type of leader these days and everybody likes this type of leader when you are being consulted regarding whatever is to be done no who will not like it so these are the features of a democratic leader now let's go on to the third type of leader that's a laissez faire or free reign leader is called a free reign leader i can as you can see this free reign leader has kept himself outside what the workers are doing he is controlling from outside he is not interfering he is letting everybody do what they want to do full communication between the subordinates is going on anybody can talk to anybody subordinate a can talk to 3 4 and to anybody they can talk and he is controlling them he is very much there he is controlling them from outside so he gives them free reign you can do whatever you want to do so long as the target is is achieved so the features are he does not believe in using power unless absolutely needed he will not use any power not like the autocratic leader jo dande ke zor pe kaam karata hai na he will not use power unless it's absolutely needed then he gives high degree of independence because he's just controlling from outside he's not even involved he's not even consulting them to take a decision he's saying you take the decision yourself so he's giving them high degree of independence that means he is allowing the subordinate to develop their own initiative then the third feature is that the group members work on their own task now let us say the workers have to make 600 units per week and if they're working 6 days a week then 100 units per day they have to make now he allows them to set their own task if you can't make 100 units on the first day then make 80 units next day you make more some days the workers can make more some days less because somebody is absent so he doesn't put any pressure on them so long as the task is achieved so long as the organizational goals are achieved he says you do it whatever way you want he has absolutely no problem with that and his role is only to support from outside i told you he's supporting from outside whenever any uh, raw material is needed or any information is needed or anything is needed he's always there to support you so he'll always support you in whatever you do but he will not unnecessarily interfere and the subordinates assume responsibility this leads to the development of the subordinates because everything the subordinates are only doing so they res assume responsibility for the work that is to be done suppose 600 units have to be made and now they made only 480 120 units more have to be made now it, they will have to see how they make 120 units in one day where the while the target was only 100 units because he is giving them total independence so these are the various types of leaders that we have now let's do the case study and as always we'll first read the question that is given and go about looking for the answer identify and describe the leadership style being adopted by pramod and this came in 2015 delhi paper so there are three types of leaders styles of leader let's see pramod was a supervisor at annapurna atta factory the factory was producing 200 quintals of atta every day his job was to make sure that the work goes on smoothly and there was no interruption in production he was a good leader who would give orders only after consulting his subordinates and work out the policies with the acceptance of the group so i hope you have been able to understand the type of leader still i'll give you a moment to recollect and then i'll share the answer with you yes after consulting the subordinate which leader consults the subordinate yes you got it right it is the democratic leader he consults the subordinate and then takes the decision that's all in this video thank you